Jack's journey has been an odd tapestry, woven from contrasting experiences like a disjointed quilt designed by committee. It may surprise you to know that I grew up as an ethnic minority in a country significantly different from the United States, a nation largely Catholic, while I held on to a religious tradition entirely foreign to that environment. I was often the subject of ridicule, exclusion, and derision, frequently reminded that I'd be going to hell after I died. On various occasions, I was nudged into fights at school, followed by instances of ostracism and outright omission from group dynamics. These experiences shaped my understanding of what it feels like to be marginalized, to be the other. I'm thankful for my upbringing because it gave me a unique perspective. When I finally moved to the United States at the age of 19, the diversity I found was not only refreshing, but also liberating. For the first time, I felt invisible, in a good way. I could blend in, breathe a sigh of relief, and focus on personal development instead of watching my back. Upon arriving, I immediately left my home to live with roommates and pursue a career in art and technology. A little over two years after setting foot in this glorious country, I was offered a full-time position at Microsoft. I was like a seed that had finally found fertile soil, and I flourished in the land of opportunity. Reflecting on these experiences, I found myself questioning the ethical and philosophical implications of how society deals with human differences. There is a growing narrative today that advocates for an almost absolute form of equality, which effectively means ignoring the unique attributes that set us apart, whether they be cultural, racial, or related to gender. While this narrative may seem progressive on the surface, it inadvertently performs an act of erasure. In my youth, my differences were certainly not ignored, but they were viewed through an adversarial lens. I often wonder, what if my differences had been viewed with genuine curiosity instead? It's as if we're told that to notice differences is in and of itself hateful, but that does not have to be the case. In modern Western society, we've chosen an opposite view, which is to assume everyone is the same, and that there are no meaningful differences to begin with. I believe this erasure can be equally bigoted Consider, if you will, the thought experiment of being a minority in a tribal nation, enveloped by a culture entirely foreign to your own, yet told each day that you're no different from the majority, despite feeling fundamentally out of sync with local cuisine, medical practices, and educational norms. Would the overarching message of sameness not feel hollow? The term discrimination often connotes negative, unjust actions, especially in social and legal spheres. However, the ability to discern differences is a basic human function, one we use daily to navigate situations and make choices. Discriminating against someone based on immutable characteristics is a form of bigotry, but pretending differences don't exist can also be harmful. Therefore, it's crucial to evaluate people based on their unique qualities, rather than group characteristics. This approach promotes a more nuanced and inclusive understanding of human diversity, and offers a way to resolve conflicts. The erasure of distinctions has troublingly permeated gender discourse as well. Acknowledging chromosomal differences between men and women has become a contentious issue, as if recognizing biological diversity somehow fosters a regressive outlook. Yet it's essential to understand that acknowledging these scientific facts isn't antithetical to social progress, it is rooted in empirical evidence. For example, when I as a man wish to enter the dating scene with the goal of starting a family of origin, Societal norms have reached a point where expressing a preference for a female partner can cause confusion. This is because the definition of woman is no longer guaranteed to align with biological attributes, complicating my quest for a family in fundamental ways. The ambiguity introduced by diluted language does little more than cloud communication and so misunderstandings. Curiously, in the one area where preserving group identity would seem most relevant, it has been completely erased. So this cultural trend of erasure extends not only to race and ethnicity, but to gender as well. It's as if we're all being turned into ants marching around a single anthill at the behest of a single queen. But hey, we can choose whatever colored hats we'd like, and bling and badges to wear. My reflections led me to assert that we must move away from the unhelpful monolith of sameness to a more nuanced, inclusive dialogue that appreciates our individual differences, 
To deny or suppress these differences is to engage in the form of intellectual dishonesty that marginalizes those who don't conform to the majority norm. Sadly, the time to address these concerns has passed. We are now entering the next phase of our descent, as I am noticing the rise of what I call avatarism. I propose that this term be formally adopted in psychological discussions to describe the diminishing weight assigned to factors like identity, race, gender, religion, and even humanity itself. Despite you thinking that culture is exaggerating these features, I contend they are actually being diminished into categories on a menu, attributes on a character, checkboxes on a list. In this perspective, these complex attributes are now being reduced to mere cosmetic artifacts akin to the arbitrary selections one makes when customizing an avatar in a virtual game, which can be changed at any time and therefore hold no inherent meaning or significance in a person's life. I fear that avatarism is eroding our understanding of the multidimensional human experience. This approach is not just overly simplistic, it is fundamentally bigoted as it sidelines the depth and complexity that come with each individual's unique background and life story. If you feel yourself gradually turning into an NPC, you're not alone. Your society is erasing you. You were even branded as unessential during the pandemic, remember? If we continue down this path, we risk reducing the richness of our collective human tapestry into an ant colony, devoid of any substance or meaning besides serving and protecting those in power. The fact is that this Increasingly interconnected global movement is leading us toward a culture of erasure, of forgetfulness, and devaluing the past, even reality itself. Not only will you choose your avatar, you will also choose your adventure. Are you ready to plug in and never wake up? We must recognize that the cognitive function of discrimination serves not solely as a mechanism for divisiveness, but also as a tool for nuanced appreciation of human diversity. The choice remains ours to harness this capacity for love rather than enmity. As we contemplate the architecture of our interconnected world, I advocate for a decentralization of societal systems, including localized digital networks, to reinvigorate a sense of communal belonging. While the zeitgeist increasingly pushes toward a monolithic global citizen identity, I caution against the eradication of our multifaceted individualities. This homogenization threatens to metamorphose us into mere non-playable characters distinguishable only by superficial accoutrements like attire and hue, yet devoid of any substantive differences. Notice each other's differences, appreciate them, and love them.